can't believe you two took that raving lunatic seriously. What do you think this is? <laughs> Hi everyone, for lack of knowledge here. In today's video, I'm going to be addressing a very tough question from the Bible. Now, I don't know about you guys, but growing up attending church, going to Sunday school and learning the Bible, I used to come across things here and there that didn't sit right with me. Things that just didn't seem right or I didn't understand at the time. Now, as I've gotten more mature in my faith, uh, read and prayed on scripture more and gotten older, some of these so-called mysteries have been revealed to me, and they may have for you guys as well. But I do understand that there are many people that still have questions about some of these tough issues or things that are in the Bible. Um, and I'd like to share what I've discovered with you. Now, the answer I may give may not be the only understanding or the only interpretation or the only explanation for these things, but it's just my opinion and what I've learned. Now, why would the father forsake the son? Now, in reading the Gospels, you come across in Matthew, Mark and Luke uh, a section. Really quickly, I'm going to read Matthew 27, 46. And it states, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, this didn't sit right with me for a long time. Uh, Jesus, the son, he was one with the father. And I never understood why the father would forsake him. Uh, so far as, you know, he was fully man and fully God. Why would he forsake uh, the son, you know, in whom he's well pleased, as it says, uh, when he was baptized. And uh, in Hebrews, it talks about let all the angels of heaven uh, bow down and worship him. So why would this be? Um, and the answer, you have to go back to uh, the book of Psalm. Now, if you go to the book of Psalm, chapter 22, verse one through 18, I won't read the whole thing. But it starts off saying that, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? And now if you read all the way through to verse 18, this is prophetic. This is a psalm of King David, and it is speaking of things that will be with Jesus Christ. Um, I consider David to be a uh, very powerful prophet. There are many places in Psalm that he has uh, prophesied of the Christ. So as you read through that, you'll see many places uh, that he foretells the coming savior. But so one reason Jesus Christ had to say this or this came uh, about when he was on the cross is that it was fulfilling prophecy. Prophecy uh, of God always comes true. And so in doing that, he was fulfilling that prophecy. But it still doesn't satisfy why. And this is the conclusion I've come to. If you look at Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter one, verse 13, there is a very, very telling verse there. And I'll read it. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and hold thy tongue? When the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. So in this, the author is speaking of God. In the verse earlier, it's you can see it's clearly talking about God. It's almighty God um, is what it's talking about. So if you put these two together and that God's eyes are purer than to behold evil and that he cannot look on iniquity, the Bible being inerrant and the Bible does not contradict itself. It is the inspired actual word of God, then we see that iniquity cannot be looked upon. Iniquity is a unique word. Iniquity is inequity is what I like to think of when I hear it or unequal, something not being fair 
um, the treacherous dealings that we have with each other as humans uh, when we manipulate, when we are unfair to people, um, injustice being done, that is iniquity. That is our nature as well. It's our sinful nature as well. Now, Jesus being up on the cross, being perfect in everything that is, all of creation, he's the only thing that is perfect. Um, he was seated and put into the world through Mary, being God in the flesh, and he lived a perfect life to redeem us for our own sins and iniquities. He redeemed our species is what I'd like to say. He is our champion. That's why he's called the Lion of Judah as well. And because of this, that is very unfair that he would be hanging up there on a cross, suffering a torturous death for all of the foolishness that you and I have done, all of our ancestors and all of our uh, offspring in the future. Billions and billions and billions of humans, all sin, all have done foolishness and wickedness. And this perfect man who lived a perfect life, a king come as a servant, hanging up there on a cross, being tortured and killed, is the epitome. That is the pinnacle of inequality or iniquity. So what I have determined is that Jesus cried that out because for a moment and you see right after that, it says he gave up the ghost and then uh, it was finished. But for that brief moment before he gave up the ghost right before he did sense the father looking away from him, turning away. Now, he was always in connection with the father. He was always um, as one with him. But at that very brief moment, the father had to look away. He had to take his eyes off of him. He had to take his hand off of him for him to die because we know the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus not having sinned, he literally could not die. And so God had to to look away from this iniquity that was being performed. And he had to take his hand off of him for him to die. Jesus Christ understood it. Jesus Christ uh, in the flesh didn't, you know, he's just like us. He, he didn't want you know, death. He didn't want torture, but he understood that that was the will of the father. And that was the purpose of him being here. So I hope this enlightened you guys to some things. I'll continue to look into some things in the Bible and I might make another video in the future about a tough question that I've had or some things that uh, didn't sit right. But I hope you guys stay blessed and don't be destroyed for lack of knowledge.